Hey everybody, I'm going to do just a little bit different video. What I've got is, um, I got a lot of people every year that ask me what they should be doing uh, to prepare for their garden in the spring. And most people start thinking about gardening about April or May, and by then it's really kind of too late. Um, that's just kind of the way it is. So I thought I would go over what I do every year. Um, I actually post this on Facebook for the last two or three years, but I thought I'd just make a video um, to make it easier. And I'm going to kind of break this down into a couple of different videos, but initially it's December. It's about 12 days before Christmas, so now's a good time to start wishing for gardening things for Christmas. Um, <clears throat> but there are some specific things you need to do in December. To help you prepare for your garden and I kind of made out a list of notes here and that I'm going to go over and what you want to start doing in December is you want to start dreaming about your garden uh, you want to start thinking about what you're going to plant you want to start dreaming about your garden layout you need to do crop rotation. If you did a garden last year, you can't plant the same crops in the same area again, or you're probably going to have pests and disease uh, on that second year planting. And if not the second year, definitely by the third year. So you constantly need to rotate your crops. So um, I found that it's easy for me to keep track of some of these things on spreadsheets or written down on notebook paper or something to that effect and um, that might help you too so if you need to just jot down on a piece of paper what your garden is going to look like do that because you, you're basically planning what your garden should be and planning will help you make sure you got enough seeds you got enough seed starting trays and that sort of thing so you want to dream about your garden and what you're going to grow in December you also want to lay out on paper what your garden is going to look like then you also want to go ahead and order any seeds that you're going to need so if you got seeds left over from last year they can be reused but you want to take an inventory of your current seeds and what seeds you need to plant or to plant your garden and you want to go ahead and get those seed orders in right away I've already ordered mine. They've actually been here for several days now. Um, but, you know, last year a lot of people were having trouble finding garden seeds because all the stores were selling out locally. Even Amazon sold out. So get those now before this huge rush comes because so many people started gardening during 2020, the COVID pandemic year. And there was a seed shortage I almost guarantee you there's going to be a seed shortage in February March and April and May of 2021 so get those seeds in orders now whatever you need um, by planning your garden on a piece of paper it will also give you the opportunity to kind of like guesstimate how much space you've got for your garden and then you're going to break that down into sections. Like, I'm going to plant my corn here. How much space do you have for corn? How many seeds do you need to plant that section of corn? For instance, I know my 4 by 8 foot, 32 square foot raised bed garden boxes will do about one and a half packets of corn seeds spaced 4 inches apart. I can then say how many, you know, packets of corn seed that I need how many do I have on hand? Oh, I might need to order more. Add that to my list of things to order. Another good thing is to know, and I've got it on here. I don't know if you can see over here. I've actually got my computer screen up. This has got like my seed inventory. It's years and years of seeds. It's seeds I've tried and tested like this Victory Gardens, all kinds of things. And I've got basically my 20, 2019 garden plan, 2020 garden plan, 2021 garden plan, Kentucky planning dates, uh, 
stuff to do with my orchard, my medicinal stuff, companion gardening, orchard, herbs. You know, I keep a lot of stuff pretty much to uh, help me plan my garden. And this is just stuff you can get through experience. Sometimes you can find it online. This is one of the cool things I wanted to show you. Um, there is a how much to plant calculator available online. If you just search for how much to plant in my garden, it'll probably come up with a link to this calculator. So you can enter your family size, like I've got two here, and it basically tells me how much space I need, how many seeds I need. So if you have a family of four, you can change this to four. And it's going to update all of these uh, vegetables, how much you'll need, your row length, how much seeds or transplants you need, the seed spacing, etc. Really nice to have. There are also other ones that I have. Um, As I find it, there's actually one in particular that I had that said something like garden plants required. Um, this, I believe, I actually got this from Farmer's Almanac. Pretty certain that's where I got it from. Uh, Farmer's Almanac online is a great place to go to find out. You know, your your zone, if you're not in zone 6B, you can go to the Farmer's Almanac, put in your zip code, it'll tell you what zone you are, and it'll give you something like this. It'll tell you when you should start your seeds indoors for like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, or you can also get it by date. I didn't fill in the one by date I intended to and never did. Um, it'll also give you your 12-month garden plan. But the one that's most important, I think, is when to start your seeds, when to transplant them outdoors, etc. Now, I found this list somewhere online. I think it was also Garden's Almanac that would tell you basically how many plants you need per person for each of the major vegetables. How many you need for a family of four. Whether or not it's suitable to be grown in a raised bed or not. And then some additional notes that I put down based on experience. Um, but this is something really useful. If you're trying to grow a garden for yourself or a family, you don't want to grow 10 packets of corn seed if it's just you by yourself. You're going to have way too much corn, and corn takes up a lot of space. So having to know this, you could come down here and say, Ah, uh, where's corn? Watch, corn won't be on here. <laughs> Um, I don't actually see corn on here. What about the other one? I probably should have been a little more I probably should have been a little bit more organized before I did this. Corn. So a single person changes to a family of one needs about 10 pounds of corn which would be a 13 foot row 19 seeds spaced every eight inches then a family of four would need about 40 pounds of corn which is about a 50 foot row length or you can break it down into two 25 foot row lengths you would actually be better off for corn to break it down into four to six, possibly eight rows. So take six into 50, be eight. Uh, six times eight would be 48. We'll call that good. And you're going to need about 75 seeds spaced every eight inches. Um, but having these will tell you, you know, about how many seeds you need. And then a lot of times when you're buying a packet of seeds, it'll tell you approximately how many seeds are on there. So 
Uh, very nice to have that. Uh, know how many seeds it takes. Now, if you're going to can, you might want to maybe double this amount for some things. Um, I usually always set out a pretty hefty amount of beans, cucumbers, tomatoes, way more than just one or two people need because I do a lot of canning for those things. Peppers are kind of the same way, peas, uh, carrots, and that's about pretty much all that I can think of. Um, cauliflower and Brussels sprouts I usually freeze along with broccoli I freeze. But you need to know what you need. You know, this, going back to the corn since we're already using it, 40 pounds of corn needed is basically what the average family will eat in one year. So you're going to want to freeze some of that or can some of that. You're probably going to want to have a little bit extra. All right. So we've kind of gone over what you should be doing in December. You should be dreaming about your garden. You should be planning your garden. You should have a garden layout. You should have an existing inventory of your current seeds. You should know what seeds you need to order. Now, you want to order your seeds anytime between now and about the second week of January. Let me tell you why. You have to start your first seeds for Zone 6B in February, the second week of February, you're going to go ahead and plant your celery, eggplant, peppers, and cabbage seeds and give them time to grow before you set them outside. That's your cool weather plants. And really, once you start planting in February, you're going to be planting different seeds about every two weeks. It gets to be really busy. So, not only do you need to think about what you need as far as seeds for right now, you also need to order any seed starting trays you might need. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret. I stopped using seed starting trays about three years ago. Um, I started using the Arrow Garden Bounty. I've got two of them. I've got the seed starting trays for each one. I think they handle around 50 seeds per tray. The Arrow Garden has a really high success rate of seed germination. And the plants grow very quickly in it, so it don't take as much time as a seed starting tray. It just works out better for me. But they have a cost of about $300 each. Most people probably don't want to spend that kind of money. Just a cheap black plastic seed starting tray will work fine to start your seeds. Now you probably will want a seed starting mat. If you've got a heating pad for a back, that on low will work. But if you got more than one tray, you need more than one um, seed starting heat mat. Now you can get those on Amazon. I'm actually going to pull up some stuff here. Because on Amazon you can get seed starting trays right now when it's in the off season at a relatively cheap price. Here's 10 seed starting trays for $23. That means they're $2.39 each. Now that's the ones that don't have the sales. If you want the ones with the sales, there's a 10 pack for $22.95. You basically have to have both of these. The seed with the sales fits inside this one. But let me tell you a secret. You don't have to do it that way. You can actually just fill this tray, the one that don't have the sales, up with soil and plant your seeds in like little rows. And as they grow up and sprout, you can just pop those right out of the ground and stick them into something bigger. Something bigger would be something like these cells right here. Or some, I actually use the peat, the three inch peat pots right here. You can usually get a hundred of those pretty cheap. Um, that looks like what this is. Now that's actually a 60. That's a little too much for 60. You can get usually a hundred for about the same cost. But what I'm getting at, you're going to want to order everything you need. So you're going to want to get your seed starting trays with or without the sales. You're also want to, going to want to get peat, mot, peat pots. You're also going to want to get um, any kind of fertilizer and lime that you're going to need. Triple 10 fertilizer to put in your general garden area. Lime anywhere you're going to put tomatoes or peppers at. Um, 
And the other thing you need to think of too, if you got fruit trees or or berry bushes like I do, my blueberries and a lot of my fruit trees, they actually get fertilized in mid-February, early March, because you want them to be fertilized before they start to come out of, of dormancy. So, as you can tell, December is not a good time to be sitting on your butt doing nothing with your garden. Um, you want to get started on this stuff now. Get all the stuff ordered that you're going to need. You know, ha Have a plan and put it into motion. Now, I'm going to have a follow-up video. Let me show you why. Uh, that's Orchard Plan. So, I've already got my 2021 garden plan. Mine's already done. I know what I'm planting. I know when I need to plant it, etc. Come down here. I've already got what's going in each one of my beds. I already know how much of each plant I'm going to need for each bed. How many seeds I'm going to need. And then, I'm also planning to expand my garden this year quite drastically. Uh, on a piece of the property that's not currently being used. And I have already know what I'm going to plant over there. So, I'm going to follow this up again when I start planting my seeds. In February, I'll bring you along for the ride. But this is kind of what I wanted to go over right now. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight this one other time. I hate to keep repeating myself, but it's really important. In December, you want to be dreaming about your garden. You want to dream what your garden's going to look like. You want to plan your garden out on a piece of paper. That helps you visualize what it's going to look like. You want to kind of estimate how much space you're going to need for each plant. That tells you how many seeds you're going to need for that plant. You want to look at seeds you had left over from last year, if there was any, and determine how many more seeds you need to eat or order in order to make your garden what you want it to be. Then you're going to, toward the end of this month or the first two weeks of January, you want to order your seeds, your seed starting trays, if you need. Uh, let me bring this back up because I wanted to show this to you. You've got the seed starting trays. You also have the ones with the cells. You can also get seed heat mats off of Amazon pretty cheap. I've seen them on here last week for like $9 and now I can see they're coming up in price. The other thing is too, the reason why you want to order these early is so that you don't get caught when everybody else starts ordering this stuff, the prices will go up because of supply versus demand, right? When the demand's high, the prices are high. When the demand's low, the prices are low. But you can take like this seat heating mat right here. It's a 10 by 20 inch, which means it fits under a 10 by 20 inch seed tray. Um, one pack 10 by 20 inch. For $12.99. Now that's without a thermostat. I think this is the one that I looked at and it's only like 20 watts. Some of these require a thermostat, some do not. I believe this is the one that does not require a thermostat. It doesn't. The wattage is so low on this, it don't require a thermostat. <clears throat> if you're going to order any of them, I would get these. They're $12.99. That means you could do four trays for about 40 bucks. Actually, it says right here. Uh, it keeps the soil temperature between 68 and 86 degrees Fahrenheit. That is perfect for starting seeds. So, um... I probably, I'm going to go ahead and add this to my list and then I'll link to this stuff. I'll try to pick out the good prices and link to this stuff. Um, this is actually a pretty decent price. And then the other one was also a pretty decent price also. Let me actually make sure that's 10 by 20. See, this is the stuff you got to watch. Look, 14 and a half by 9. 
We need the 10 by 20 trays, not those. See, I almost made a mistake. These are the 10 by 20s. Is that just for one? Wow. There they are. Almost the same price. A little bit more than what the other ones were. But they're a lot bigger too. So try to always get the 10 by 20. Um, is that the right ones? 72 cell usually is not 10 by 20. Now that's 11 by 21 with a lip. Pretty certain that's them. Y'all don't get mad at me if these come up wrong. <laughs> um, you know, I'm doing just the same thing you are. Go to Amazon, try to figure out through half the time the false information that's posted from the Chinese manufacturers. Um, I don't usually use the ones that have these grow domes. Let me show you why. That one tray is $36.90. Let me tell you what you can do. You can put saran wrap over your normal tray and save yourself a bunch of money. Because as soon as that plant pops up through the soil, you don't need that dome anymore. So don't waste your money on those. Um, what else was it you needed? Peat, peat pots. I try to get these in the hundreds. I don't get them with the labels. They're cheaper. See there, $22.95 for $100. $21.95 for $60 because it comes with the labels. You don't need those labels. Uh, let me check to see what that other one was too. There was another one I saw for $18. That's only $60. So probably the best one is to get this. $22.00. For a hundred or for twenty two for five dollars, so that would be uh, five times five would be twenty five. So it's actually cheaper to get these, but I'll go ahead and list this stuff. Don't forget, uh, well, I'll bring it up again. Uh, fertilizer and lime that's pretty much dependent on you. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video because. I know I'm getting into some serious time on this. I'm probably going to have to edit it down. <clears throat> As always, God bless you. God bless your family. God bless your homestead. And if you have any questions about gardening, don't hesitate to ask in the comments below. I'm always responsive and usually answer within a few minutes of you posting stuff. Unless I'm asleep or in bed. Might be within 12 hours, but I always answer questions quickly. So, thanks for watching.